Hello everyone. In today's video we will be looking at two types of ball and socket joints. One standard ball and socket joint as you can see here and another ball and socket joint that will be a print in place type of joint. After looking at the designs of both of these joints we will then 3D print them to look at their effectiveness and capabilities. Now for this first standard type of ball and socket joint we can see that the design is fairly simple just a few minor steps using extrudes and revolved extrudes and cuts to get our joint. If we look at the sketch profile of the actual socket, we can see that the top insert profile here is 8.5 millimeters in diameter. This diameter is also the diameter of the actual ball that will be fitting into the socket, which will allow a nice press fit. Now, one thing to note is that this 8.5 millimeters may need to vary depending on your type of manufacturing method, 3D printer, and 3D printer settings. We also have the outer cut inside of this socket as a diameter of 9.5 millimeters, which will allow the socket to be put a little bit deeper inside, as well as have ample space to rotate around. For the second ball and socket joint, we have the print in place ball and socket joint. This is again fairly easy to design with about five or six different steps. However, with this one, the ball is already designed into the socket. If we look at the section view, we can see that there is a gap between the actual ball and socket, and that gap is approximately 0.4 millimeters. This gap is ideal when 3D printing the ball in midair because the first few layers of the ball to be 3D printed will still be ever so slightly attached to the bottom of the socket, which will just require a little bit of force to break the actual ball free from the socket to allow it to properly rotate. Now that we've looked at the designs for both of these ball and socket joints, let's get them 3D printed so we can look at how effective they are after their manufacture. Alright, so we have the two sets of ball joints printed. Let's look at the standard ball and socket joint first. We can see that it's a pretty nice fit. We get a nice click, as you can see. It's not super tight in there. So there's still a bit of tolerance. We get a nice bit of rotation. It's pretty well stuck in there. It's a little looser than I would like, so I would consider, if I were to reprint this, just to shrink this top diameter of the insert just a little bit, but overall pretty happy with this ball joint. It's a pretty simple print and it's very effective. Now let's look at the print in place ball joint. So this is taken directly off the printer so we can see that the actual joint is still a little bit stiff, but with a little bit of force we can just snap it and we see it's nice and movable. So pretty happy with this one. It works very, very effectively. We see it's also locked in place, applying decent amount of force here, and I don't think I'd be able to get this out, maybe with a pair of pliers or something, but it is locked in place as we intended it to, so this can be very useful for a couple designs if you want to print in place and have these ball joints not move out. So, pretty happy with these two joints. We can see the advantages and disadvantages of both. And that's all we have for you guys today. So if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, happy printing.